Cool. Um, so what I like to do is go out into environments and record, um, and that could be a, uh, a natural environment like say uh, down at the beach or in the bush. Um, and sometimes I like to go out into the city and record as well. And um, when I do, and if I have the opportunity to, I'll take uh, a microphone like this. This one is a sound field uh, microphone, and uh, it's an ambisonic microphone. What it does is it captures using four capsules um, spherically all the way around so um, if you've got uh, planes flying overhead then it'll capture that sound and if it's got things coming around the side then it'll capture that sound as well and the idea is that when you play this stuff back through multiple speakers it replays the scene kind of as you hear it when you're in the environment yourself so as a plane flies overhead and you have speakers above you then that would capture that and replay that for you um, in the uh, exhibition that I have running at the moment, I've got eight speakers in a ring. So as you sit in this chair and the, um, and the recordings play, you can hear um, uh, you can hear the information, you know, like a bees flying past in one piece, for example, or the shore coming in and racing up behind you in, in another one. Uh, so the idea is that it's quite an immersive experience, but it sort of puts you in some ways in, in the place where the recordings were made in a way that a normal mono or stereo recording can't quite manage. Um, I've been working with Anne Noble on one of her projects uh, which centred around recordings of bees. Um, she did her um, installation in France uh, last year um, and it involved um, projections of bees and um, live performances by um, Hayden Chisong, um, among other things, and I helped her out with the recordings of, of the bees. Um, when we were rec recording them, we decided that it would be great to capture them in surround using an ambisonic microphone, um, but we never quite had the opportunity to do it. Uh, and when I took on this uh, residency here at um, Toy Pointy, then I thought it was a good idea to make use. Um, of the, of the uh, university's resources and go up to her house and record the bees. And one of the wonderful things about the bees is that they centre around a hive and there's a lot of different activity that goes on at different times of the day. But they also have um, very specific flight paths and that's something that's really difficult to capture with, um, with a um, stereo microphone. Um, with a surround microphone you get the sense of the bees flying from behind you and then into the hive and then taking other directions out and around you and you can really hear that spatial distribution of, um, of the bees and, and what, what their activity is. And so um, Anne and I donned um, bee, bee suits and set the microphone up and it, initially they weren't that impressed to have a microphone in front of them but once they relaxed into it they just went about their normal activity and uh, I have a piece, it's an un, essentially an untitled piece uh, running as part of the installation. Um, and uh, it's about 15 minutes long but it's quite mesmerising, you'll sit there and you'll, you can hear the bees and so forth but then you can hear all these other so uh, sounds, um, you know, there's kaka in the, in the background and, and then um, you know, there's a cat, a cat cat fight going on down the valley somewhere else, so there's lots of stuff going on, it's, it's pretty interesting. Cool, so um, another work that I've um, put together um, centres around a recording made uh, down at Burden's Gate, which is just as you go around to sort of Pencarra out towards that way around the end of East Corner. And uh, late at night um, on the beach, the tide's going out, and I set up a big, uh, a big boom stand uh, with the microphone on it, sort of out, kind of over the over the water, sort of facing down, looking at the waves as they're breaking and the. Um, the, the waves would, you'd hear them breaking in front of you and then they'd come through and sort of behind the microphone and so when you're sitting there listening to the piece it sort of feels like the, the, the waves are breaking and then they're sort of like rushing through you almost and then as the waves recede the, um, you know, the shingle, the sound of the, the high pitched sound of the shingle sort of moving back with it sort of washes through and, and, and heads back out so it's quite an intense sort of experience sitting here listening to it. Another piece I've installed is uh, made in, um, in the bush behind Lowry Bay in, in Eastbourne and um, basically 
What it is is an ambisonic microphone set up in the bush. I've got loudspeakers placed around um, various positions and I'm uh, using um, a MIDI controller and a computer uh, camp table um, to diffuse sounds into the environment and in this particular instance I've got a uh, four different sign tones and I can control the pitch of them and their amplitude so I just sort of ride the volume and adjust the just the tone as I go and the idea is that um, I'm kind of playing in and amongst the sort of native um, birds and so you can kind of hear in, in the distance you can hear sort of tui and all sorts of um, birds going and then I start um, playing kind of along with them and I like to think that it's kind of like a bit of a call and response sort of thing which may or may not be the case but um, it's just interesting to hear um, you know quite alien sounds in quite a natural environment and I do a lot of that kind of work where I take speakers places and, and set up installations and record them using the ambisonic microphone.